Hi guys, welcome to this session. I'm Rahul from Team Cloudy ML, and today we are going to see top ten machine learning projects for beginners. Suppose many of you may be from a different background, and when you came into data science, you are completely thinking like, uh, what's going on? How to do a project? How to approach a project? And which projects to approach? so that you can learn so here we have brought our beginners like 10 projects which they can approach and after doing all these projects trust me you will have a lot of confidence on yourself so let's see so before jumping into the first project i would like to ask you this quiz which keyword is used to get out of the loop in python whether it's continue pass break or none of these so answer this in the comment section i would like to see how many of you give the correct answer i will answer this at the end so let's see the first project when i came into data science as i have been from different background when i came into it the first challenge i took after learning uh, Python libraries like NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, it was Titanic project. And I use this directly on Kaggle. And I think it's a very good practice for you as a beginner. If you just jump into Titanic competition, it is always on on Kaggle. And you work on this data set. I had gained a lot of confidence after doing this. It was my first uh, first project, which I took it as a challenge. So I hope most of you know about Titanic. So this data set contains data of those people who were on that ship. And you have to predict uh, how many, how many, what is the ratio of people survived there? It's a classification project. And let me show you on Kaggle itself. So if you check on, so you can see this Titanic machine learning for, from disaster. And you can simply click on join competition. You can check uh, this overview, description of it. So also you can check the data here. You have this training set, press set, and you can check details about this file. So if you click here, you can see overview of it. These are all the columns and definition of those columns. And you can see the explanation of some variables which are hard to interpret normally. So this is how you can check. Now, let's say you still feel uncomfortable working on this project and you feel that, no, it's, it's, it's good if I can just go through solution and understand how it's, how the approach is being done. So for that, you can simply click on this code and you can uh, filter here, most votes. And then you can see all these uh, high, highly voted code uploaded by some practitioners now we have also we have also uploaded one titanic titanic uh, video on youtube on our channel i will put that link in the description you will get the also recommendation uh, at the end of the video you can go through a uh, step by step taught by us live I mean, uh, you can just code while watching our video. That's another way you can have an experience of how to approach this project. Now, next, let's go to next. So as a beginner, Titanic will be very helpful for you. So you must go through it if you haven't and you are a beginner. Now, next, after this, I will suggest this housing prices prediction. This is also a very great regression project like you have to predict housing price so it's a regression problem previously titanic was classification and it has 79 explanatory variables it will be 
little bit challenging for you and a lot of learning as, for, as a beginner. So just go through this. This is also available on Kaggle. Check its uh, details of description of the data set and then all the columns. So now you may ask like how much time you must give on a single project as a beginner. I remember when I was working on Kaggle Titanic data set, I had literally spent nearly four to five days on it. Every day I was trying to improve my accuracy. So that was a good process. I will suggest that as a beginner, you must give, let's say if you're giving three hours every day on a project, I will say that you must work on it for at least four to five days. Don't try to jump on different data sets and projects. I will suggest that take some time and solve different different kinds of problem and give it proper time. But, but let's say you have done already on regression problem two, three times. So I won't say that then keep doing it for four or five days. But if it's from different domain, for example, housing, then retail, then medical data set, then it's okay to give some time. So because you also learn about that domain. So this is housing prices, second project. Now let's go to third, forest cover type prediction. So it's a classification project. This is uh, also like most of the data sets here I am suggesting are all on Kaggle. It's a great thing to for, for beginners because they can they can check some other notebooks also if they need. So this is also a good beginner's project. You, you can try this. As a beginner, you can at, at last like um, work on like uh, six to 10 projects before jumping into live competition on Kaggle. That will be really helpful for you. So forest cover type prediction. You must check this also. Let me show you once forest cover type prediction you can see here. So you need to classify forest categories here. And you can also simply join this competition. And joining this competition is helpful because you get some passion to do something to submit a prediction which drives you to work on it more than normal if you are just working on a project where you don't need to make any submission then i mean it's a good thing to do you can check a leaderboard leader, leaderboards here so this is a good thing you can check and you can check some good notebooks here also one thing i will suggest that uh, let's say you are finding it very hard to work on this project or any project you feel that I'm a beginner, it's hard for me. So as in the beginning, it's okay to read some notebooks, the highly voted notebooks, so that you can get an idea. But eventually you have to jump and work on it without checking any notebook. Even if you are failing, you are not able to do it, at least hit your head until you feel totally frustrated, you have no idea what to do. And then you can think what, where I'm doing wrong, what I'm, am I missing? Then you can check notebook. But eventually you will have to jump into it. Don't wait too long. It's okay. Just fail once or twice like where you are not able to approach. Because I remember in the beginning it was hard for me also. But eventually I jumped into it. What you can do is if you are stuck at some step, like what you need to do next, you can just keep a notes that, okay, first I need to look at the data, then fix the data set if there's any missing values. And then uh, I have to take the insights from it properly. And then I need to obviously go for model building or scaling first, scaling and then model building, and then try different, different models. So make some points how you need to approach and check where you are stuck in the in the project and then see how others have approached this through this way you can you can really learn a lot so let's check fourth this is bike sharing demand prediction it's a reg regression problem this is also a good data set there are some research paper on it also you can check now let's go to next. This is Hello World of Computer Vision, Amnesty Digit, Digit Recognizer, Recognizer. There are some data sets in built-in TensorFlow and one of them is Amnest. 
So whatever you see in built data set there, it's all like hello world of computer vision when it comes to any image data set. So you must do this if you prefer, if you would like to go in computer vision, this is a classic data set. First data set, you can do it very easily because it's already inbuilt. You don't need to fix the data set. You don't need to import it from local, from your machine. You don't need to download any image. It's just inbuilt and you can just see how does it feel like working on images. I had loved this. So you must give it a try if you want to go in computer vision and in deep learning also. So normally you can solve it through machine learning, but if you can also do it with, you can also, actually it's image classification, it's best to, it's best to, actually it's, I think you can only go it through uh, deep learning. MNIST Digit Recognizer. And uh, this is a classic MNIST data set of handwritten images. And it is a very good classification problem. And if you want to go into computer vision, this is a good start. So you can solve this through machine learning and deep learning both. And you can see how deep learning uh, and even in deep learning, which method works best. Now let's go to dog versus cats classification. This is also a classification problem for images. And like if you want to go in computer vision, this is the second data set I will say you should go for to sol solve it. And it, uh, you, you won't find this data set into inbuilt in TensorFlow. So this is a good problem. Like you will have to download images and then uh, use it, take it from your local machine and solve it. This is a good problem as a beginner. Now, next is Jigsaw Toxic Comment Classification. Now here, this is related to text data. So if you want, if you like working on text data and you would like to go in NLP as an NLP engineer, this is a good problem for you to work with as a beginner. There are some inbuilt libraries in TensorFlow also like Reuters dataset, which you can practice before going to Jigsaw Toxic Comment Classification. So do check it out. All these notebooks are again, as I said, it's on Kaggle. For example, this, since this is our first NLP data set, let me show, let me show you Jigsaw. Jigsaw comment. Let me check if it's there or not. I think it must be there. Yeah, you can see Jigsaw toxic comment classification challenge. And here you can, again, if you are a beginner, you want to see some notebooks, you can see here. There are a lot of notebooks. You can just check their approach and try to see if you can come with, come up with any better approach. So do check this out. Next is again, NLP dataset sentiment analysis movie re re review. We have uploaded one sentiment analysis also, which is probably easier than this. You can check our YouTube, YouTube video. I will also add that in a comment section or in the description. And again, like you would enjoy this. Trust me. Uh, I have personally worked on sentiment analysis. Also, it's a good data set. You, I think you would like working on text data. It's fun. Next again is Quora questions, questions classification. This is also related to NLP as I have added some, uh, some two projects from computer vision for beginners and so many are like on uh, NLP also and some other basic ML projects. So what I have shown you till now, till up to ninth is mostly beginners. This is, I will say some more challenging. It, it has some imbalanced data set because you have to find fraud here. Like, and frauds are usually if you see fraud cases, it's usually very, very less, like less than 1%, even less than 0.1%. So this is going to be a challenging project for you. So do check this out. IEEE fraud detection. And it's from the real world e-commerce transactions. So I would like to say one thing. Maybe some of you may feel that all these are available on Kaggle and it, it's not worth it. That's not true because uh, these are uh, something which builds the foundation of your learning. 
and projects like fraud detection is really something you can put in your resume and don't let anyone think that just because it's available on kaggle just because it's available on kaggle it's it's not a good project to do because kaggle has a lots of research data set also where people work and put their notebook so that others can learn so don't underestimate kaggle here or if someone underestimate just tell them their value value is just you need to be confident about your work what you have done it doesn't matter if it's just from kaggle if you can explain it well nobody will underestimate your work just because it's taken from kaggle so do check all these notebooks and projects first first just try it by yourself and then check others notebook and only if you feel that you need it just check it and then again try to come up with some other approach so let's come to our quiz answer which keyword is used to get out of the loop in python it's break we use break keyword to get out of the loop whenever we need we use continue to skip that uh, round of loop of for or while and we use pass when we don't want to do anything so break is the correct answer so thank you all of all of you for bearing up to this time and i hope this video was um, something learning for you and if you feel it's worth it please hit like subscribe our channel and share it with others thank you stay safe bye bye